This is a lesson on the work energy theorem in the work and energy unit. As a quick review, I've covered the utility and idea of state functions and conservation laws. We looked at the definition of work in the last lecture and looked at like what are the types of energies and as we move forward I'm formalizing these ideas more. We're going to look at kinetic energy, energy of motion during this lecture and we'll move forward to potential energy. Together kinetic and potential energy are called mechanical energy and this is where the idea of conservation of energy comes in and we'll get to that in a future lecture as well. But just to lay down like this kinetic energy and potential energy, those are the ones that are we're, we're really developing during mechanics, during general physics one. Again, energy is a scalar, so we're not going to do anything vector to it. It's just a number. And remember with energy, we need to keep track of signs, whether it's energy being added to a system or energy being taken away from a system. There's positive and negative. Our units are joules. Under the work and energy theorem, we need to take into account this idea of kinetic energy and what kinetic energy is. And I said it's energy of motion. And this may be a linear or translational motion where we just have a velocity vector in a straight direction. That's what translational motion is. Uh, there is rotational kinetic energy, which has to do with energy of rotational motion, uh, and that's for a future lesson. So we see that just regular translational linear kinetic energy is one half times the mass times the velocity squared. Okay, and it turns out if we take all of the work being done by all of the forces in a system, that will result in a change in motion, which we can measure as kinetic energy. So this is called the work energy theorem and this is a fundamental concept that you will retain as you move forward in physics through any physics sequence. Okay. Just to um, be explicit with the change in kinetic energy, I would do an, a final minus initial, change is always final, minus initial. So you can put these terms in, typically the mass is the same mass, there's no mass change. There could be, but typically there's not. So you could just think of a change in kinetic energy for a single object that's not changing mass as 1 half mv final squared over v initial squared. And that can make your calculations maybe a little bit easier. Um, and so what I've chosen is a problem to help exemplify this. Here's the coasting on snow problem. A 65 kilogram skier coasts up a snow covered hill that makes an angle of 25 degrees with the horizontal. The initial speed of the skier is 6.6, .6, so I'm going to make note of that initial speed. After coasting, here's a distance up the slope, 1.9 meters up the slope. The skier has a final speed of 4.4 meters per second, so the skier is slowing down. And I'm just going to draw a general sketch of the situation to identify my initial and final. Remember, now we're in the realm where initial and final are going to be important things to identify. So there's a nice slope. Um, I'm going to mark down here as an initial position, and there's a skier. Um, there's some sort of V initial I can mark. Uh, the displacement is up the slope. I can put 1.9 meters up here. And there's some sort of final position, and I can mark that with some sort of V final. And this is helping me identify initial and final and kind of encode what's going on in the problem. The first part says find the net work done on the skier by all forces. And this is a very suggestive statement saying that you need to find the force, the work done by each individual force. But what we're going to note, what was given in the problem are the two speeds, the initial and final speed. And work net, there's two ways to find it. I can take the net work of all the individual forces and add them up. Or now I have this new tool that says I can just find the change in the kinetic energy. So that's what I'm going to do for part A. The network is going to equal the change in the kinetic energy, which is 1 half m v final squared minus v initial squared. Pretty easy. I can plug those numbers in, a half times 65. v final squared is 4.4 quantity squared minus the initial speed is 6.6. .6. And I will square that. 
Okay. And I'm going to note here, and you may have already maybe in your head said, oh, that's going to give me a negative number. Am I okay with a negative number? That's a good question to ask. And what we're going to note is that the person is definitely slowing down so that there's work being taken away from, there's energy being taken away from the skier. And so the network will be a negative value. We're fine with it being a negative value. Even though it's moving, the change, there's a loss. So that number is negative 786.5 joules. So there's that one. It says, now find the work done on the skier and skis by the normal force, the gravitational force, and the kinetic friction force. Okay, it wasn't clear in the problem if there were was a friction force, but they definitely tell us down here. And what I'm going to do is draw a free body diagram for the person, not just to like do a force analysis, but to kind of encode which direction the forces are as compared to the displacement vector, right? The displacement vector is up the incline, and I can draw that in the free body diagram here. And that's when we find work by forces, we care about the displacement vector, which direction it is, as opposed to the other forces. So there's the normal force, there's the weight. The normal force is perpendicular to the incline. Um, I still need to add in the friction force here. I'll add that force of friction. It's definitely a kinetic friction force. You can add a coordinate system in here. Um, I would make down the hill positive because that's the direction of the acceleration, right? The acceleration vector, it's slowing down, so the acceleration vector is down this incline with the displacement vector up the incline. So let's watch this. When we find angles, we'll need to um, keep in mind the orientation of these vectors with the displacement vector. So part B uh, we'll do the normal force, the work done by the normal force. Well, we're going to need the magnitude of the normal force. I don't know it, um, but it turns out when I plug in cosine of this angle in here, cosine, well, the angle between the displacement vector and the normal vector is 90 degrees. And I can shortcut this whole calculation by saying this is zero joules. Cosine 90 is zero. The normal force does not contribute to the forward motion, nor does it take it away, so it has zero joules. And um, we'll do the gravitational force next, the weight uh, equals mg. Uh, we're going to note that the angle between the weight and the displacement vector is going to be a 90 degrees plus this additional angle from the incline. So let's write this out. Um, the work done by gravity is going to be the gravitational force, which is mg, times the displacement times cosine of the angle between them, which we decided was going to be 90 plus 25. So I can write out these numbers. I will get 65 times their good old 9.8. The distance is 1.9. And then we get cosine of 115 degrees. When you run this through your calculator, you will note that cosine 115 is a negative value. We expect that. The work done by gravity, it's kind of opposing the displacement. It's pulling down the hill. It's one of the forces causing it to slow down. And so we're going to get that the work done by gravity is a negative value, negative 269.5 uh, point, oh, I lost my pen, 69.21 joules. It's a negative value. That's the work done by gravity. OK. So, um, the kinetic friction force, the work done by the kinetic friction force. Uh, I don't know the kinetic friction force. It'd be, they didn't give me any coefficient of friction in here. I can't find the kinetic friction force by our normal Newton's second law methods. Like, I don't have the coefficient of kinetic friction. But what I do have is the network and the work by the other two forces. So, I can do sort of this backward. Uh, reasoning that the network has to be equal to the work done by the normal force plus the work done by gravity plus the work done by the kinetic friction force. Well, I'll solve this for the work done by the kinetic friction force. The work done by the kinetic friction force has to be work net minus, well, I'm going to make no note that that's zero, right? Minus the work done by gravity. 
So uh, let's keep track of our negative signs too. 786.5 joules minus a negative 269.21 joules. So that's going to add up in the middle here rather than subtracting a negative and a negative makes a positive so that we see the work done by the friction force is going to be make up whatever that the weight doesn't contribute right the difference between this number and this number right this number plus something has to equal that number and so the friction force we get a negative value which we expect it's opposing the displacement right it has an angle of 180 degrees between these two so it will be a negative value and you get negative 517.29 joules work done by friction and note we started with the change in kinetic energy and that allowed us to find a work done by an individual force I wanted to round off this problem. Now that we know the work done by friction, and I can write that down, we just found that on the previous slide, the work done by friction is negative 517.29 joules. A problem, a follow-up problem may be, what is the coefficient of kinetic, kinetic friction between the skis and the snow? So what you can do is use the definition of work, the work done by friction. Well, we know the number, but we can also break it up. The work done by friction force has to equal mu k times the normal force, right, the work done by friction, times the displacement times cosine of the angle between them, which we said was 180 degrees. I'm going to make note that in the y direction with that free body diagram, I had the normal force upward, the normal force minus the weight down into perpendicular to the incline, uh, which is mg cosine theta. Those two have to equal zero, so I know the normal force has to be mg cosine theta. And I like bringing up this part of the problem, not because it's asking you to find a coefficient of friction, but it really highlights like here's a cosine here and here's a cosine here, and the angle that goes in here is different than the angle that goes on in here. Watch out what your angles are. Make sure you're keeping particular attention to what angle you need in the equation. This is the angle with the incline. That's the 25 degree angle. So that the normal force doesn't have to hold the whole weight up, only a component of the weight. So I'm going to plug all these in. Um, mu k, I'm trying to find. Uh, the friction I know is a value, so I'm going to leave it there. Mu k is the thing I'm trying to find. The normal force is mg cosine 25. I still have the displacement, and I have a negative 1. I'm just going to go ahead and make 180, cos 180, a negative 1. We can keep plugging in values and go through. Let's see. I'm going to solve for mu k on one side. That'll equal the work done by friction force divided by negative m, which is 65, d, 1.9, cosine 25, and I still need a 9.8 in here. I put the d, I mix up my d and my g in here, so let's put a 9.8 on the end down here too, so that I have all the numbers I need. And this number right here is the value from up here, 500, negative 517.29. So when you plug all these through, and you're probably already thinking, at least I hope you are if you're catching on from friction force, the coefficient of friction we want between 0 and 1. It has to be a, a number between 0 and 1, the coefficient. And when you solve and plug your numbers through your calculator for this one, you get 0 0.24021. So that's a nice follow-up question that incorporates concepts from the force unit with concepts in the work and energy unit. You saw in the previous problem we had to work calculate some uh, acceleration. Um, so watch out for these ideas of kinematics and forces still coming through with the work and energy material. It's all comprehensive.